Do you want to learn how to take your footage from this to this? To this? If yes, then welcome to the show. Hello everyone, my name is Adam. I'm a professional animator slash video editor and graphic designer based in Casablanca, Morocco. And I will be your instructor for this course. So in this course, you will learn about color grading. I'm gonna take you through all the necessary steps to make the perfect color grading as a beginner. So you're probably asking yourself, what is color grading? So color grading is a two-step process, okay? The first process is color correction, and that's when you apply adjustment to the full image. It could be white balance, it could be contrast, saturation, all of those are included in color correction. And color grading is when you finish color correction, you can jump ahead and then create a creative look. For example, if you watch John Wick, you can see that there is a lot of blue in the movie, and that is a creative look, okay? So, when do you need color correction, and when do you need color grading? So, if you're just starting as a colorist, you're going to be working on the following. Interviews, TV shows, reality shows, weddings, travel videos, promos. And all you need for those is color correction, okay? Because color correction is 70% of the color grading process. And when do you need color grading? As if you are working on music videos, commercials, and movies, shorts or long movies. So unless you're working for the biggest studios in Hollywood or in the world, all you need is color correction and you will be fine. So enough talking guys and let's jump straight to the course. So before we start the course, you need to download the project files from here. Okay, so right here we have the three fitness videos plus the premium lots. And down here, there is a wedding video, which I use in the bonus lecture to show you how to adjust the scan. So obviously you're gonna need some familiarity with DaVinci Resolve. If it's your first time touching DaVinci Resolve, the course may be a bit intimidating for you. Okay guys, let's open DaVinci Resolve. So I'm super duper excited about this course. Okay, so I'm using the studio version. Even if you're using the free version, it's fine. So the first thing you're gonna have when you open DaVinci Resolve is something like this. You have the database here with the disk and you have your recent projects. You probably won't have anything here or maybe you do. So I wanted to say something before I can open a new project is that a lot of people when they have DaVinci Resolve, they want to save their files or their data in a specific folder. So if you wanna do that, you can just come over here so by default, you have everything saved under local database. If you just right click and open file location, you can see where everything is saved. Projects and I have all my projects here. If you want to change that location, you can click on new database creates okay give it a name any name for example location let's say i want to save it under my f drive i can right click and create a new folder Make sure the folder is empty and then click selected folder. Now create. And you can see a brand new tab will open for you and then you can go ahead and start creating new projects. But I'm not gonna be using this space to work on. I'm gonna go back to my initial space, this one. And you can of course leave the thumbnails like this, big thumbnails, or you can switch to list view, just like in Premiere Pro. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on new project. You're gonna be working on a fitness video, so I'm just gonna type fitness as new name of the project and then create. And now I wanna head back to the edit tab. 
So I'm going to stop this lecture here and see you on the next lecture where I'm going to be explaining some technical boring stuff. I promise you guys it won't take that long. It's going to be quick. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is make this thing full screen. Okay, so we can have a better view just like this. Um, in this lecture, I want to talk about the boring technical stuff. I'm going to go real quick, just the most necessary stuff that you're going to need. So the first thing that is really important is the project setting right here. If you click, you can see your project settings right here. So the timeline resolution is fine. It's what I want. Okay. You can, of course, work in uh, 4K if you want. I'm not going to be working in 4K on this video, even though maybe the clips are in 4K. I'm not sure because I downloaded them from Adobe Stock. And the most important thing here, of course, is the time frame. So basically, you don't have to worry about anything here. OK, you just, got, you just leave it like this. Once you import the project, everything here is going to change automatically. OK, we're going to see how in a second. So cancel. And now I want to go to DaVinci Resolve and then Preferences. Okay, let's go to System first. So Media Storage is very important. It's where you want your files to be stored. Okay, the first one was the database, but this one is the project files. If you want the Media Storage location to be different than the one you have here by default, you just click on Add and then just choose any file. For example, I want to Save my files here. I can select folder. Now I have two storage locations, but I only need one, so I can remove the second one. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is internet account. So for example, you can sign into your YouTube or Vimeo account and you can upload things automatically. If you got a user, you want to pay attention to projects backups. You want to have this thing checked. Okay, it's under project save and load. And you can choose the backup disk different than the storage disk, okay? Because sometimes media can get corrupted and you can lose everything you've been working on. That's why it's important to have this thing checked, okay? Project backups, super necessary. Once you're done, click Save. And now we're ready to import our project. So File, Import File, Import Media. Um, let's go to the documents that I told you to download. And then let's import these clips. You see now it's asking you if you want to change the project settings that we talked about earlier. So you click change. Now that I have my files here, I can click on this one and bring it on the timeline. If I click on project settings right now, okay, you can see that things changed. Now it's 25, it was 24. The time resolution is still the same. All good, cancel. Now, let me add another clip. Mm, this one. And now let's go to the color tab where we are going to start color grading our stuff. Okay, so just click here on the color tab. Okay, guys, and now see you on the next lecture where we're going to be discussing the color tab and how to work under the color tab. Okay, guys, so a quick overview of the color tab and the venture resolve. So I don't want to spend too much time on it. So it's pretty straightforward. You're going to learn as you work on. Uh, now, the first thing we have here are the styles. If you click on gallery, we have the styles. And the styles, the styles are basically when you color grade your, uh, your footage, you can right click it and then grab a still. And when you have it here, it will contain all the data from the notes and the color grading. And basically, you can right click and export it. You can choose anything from here so people can work with, okay? If you want to share it with someone, okay? Okay, I said okay. So these are the styles. I'm going to delete it. Right here, we have the LUTs. 
we're gonna talk about clots in details afterward we have the media pool that's where our clip is uh, this is the timeline so basically this is the same thing as the edit tab but just a small version of it what else is important so of course the notes the notes there are like layers in photoshop if you're used to working with layers these are the open effects that means you can adjust uh, you can add any effects from here to your notes directly you have a bunch of them we're going to be working with sharpen later vignettes what a color there is a lot of stuff in here okay let me go back to clips let's reselect my clip yeah good you can of course adjust the uh, ui of the venture of the color tab as you can see here but you cannot adjust you cannot adjust this one i can't adjust it on my computer unless you're working on a big screen or monitor i'm just working on my laptop for now Okay, and right here we have all the controls. We have the blur, we have uh, the tracking window, we have the window, qualifier, the curves, and the color wheels. Okay, so basically that's it. Now, the first thing and the most important things here are the scopes. And you want to learn how to read the scopes. So I'm going to right click here and uh, go to show scopes. Bring the four of them. And the most important ones that you're going to be working with are the parade, the waveform, and the vector scope. So the parade, for example, it contains the RGB channels. We have the red, green, and blue. And the rule of thumb for the parade is that you, you want your highlight, which is right here, to be under this line, which is 1023. So you want them to be on the second line, just about here. I think right here they're perfect. We can adjust them further. But they're perfect okay and then we have this line right here 512 and these are the midtones or the mid lights and then you want to have them either above or almost close to 640 and it's of course gonna depend on the shots because you're gonna be working with a lot of different shots and it's gonna look crazy it's not always gonna look as good and easy as this one okay but this is a beginner's course so i'm choosing something that you can digest guys and down here these are the shadows okay the darkness and you want them to be as close as this line right here not the whites but this line and the color correction after when you're doing looks they can go ahead and crash this line it's not a problem because you already corrected your footage but for color correction that's the rule guys that's the rules if i go to the waveform same thing okay but the, here you can now here you just see whites and some colors you have we have some red some green and some blue but most all you see as whites that because the waveform represents the lights and the uh, footage so up here it's the extreme highlights the window down here is the shadows and in the middle that's her okay that's her and these things right here and vector scope this will tell you if your shot is balanced or not now right here we can see that it's okay it's not perfect but it's okay because it's still in the middle and as you adjust the clip you want to make sure that this thing stays in the middle we can see right here is going a little bit to the the left yeah it's to the left yeah it's to the left but we can fix it i think yeah i said i think because it's color it's color grading and color correction it's very complicated and you never know but this is this looks fine if it was going all the way to this side that would look bad and we'll see how we can fix that um what else let's go back to the parade one more thing here you can see that uh there is some whiteness in here on the top of these colors and you can see these spikes i don't know if you can see them i'm gonna just make this thing bigger you can see the spikes right here spikes of blue we don't have much on here and spikes of red right here okay we're gonna learn how to fix those as well because i don't like to have spikes like this on my scopes i'm just gonna make them flat to align with this uh, with these white lines and same thing down here we have some spikes coming out from the shadows okay and we can remove them to get that cinematic look on our shots 
and also to have a cleaner view of the shadows okay because these spikes they just irritate me and i don't like to have them now let me just remove this and go back to here and on the next lecture we're gonna start building our node tree in this lecture we're gonna be building our node tree so i have my first node here what i'm gonna do is click on alt or option s to create a new serial node okay and i need seven of those i just place them here so i'm just clicking alt plus s or option plus s and put them here nice and steady okay if you think this, these are too much nodes well you we haven't seen anything yet bro or ma'am anyway the first node i'm not gonna touch it i always leave it for sharpen and noise reduction although i'm not i i don't recommend using noise reduction right away because most of the time when you use noise reduction in davinci resolve your computer is just too slow and it tends to crash so i'm just gonna use sharpen the second node are gonna be the primaries okay primaries or masters we're gonna be adjusting the masters the master sliders are these things right here okay these are the color wheels and these are the master sliders this one is gonna be the white balance using the color wheels okay because there, there you have many different ways of balancing your footage but the most effective way for me is to use the color wheels a lot of people use this automatic balance thing white balance qualifier right here you have to click on it and then just find the uh, most whitest area of your image and click but anything with automatic, I just don't uh, trust it. This node is going to be for the contrast and pivots. The five node, it's going to be for the curves and secondaries. Yes, please. This one, vignettes optional but i highly recommend to work with vignettes either outside or inside vignettes and the seventh one is the color grading so creating creative looks basically when i say color grading i'm talking about secondaries grading not, not the secondaries curves and what you do is you have a you have to create a creative look so it depends do they want the the shot to have more orange in it or more blue or more whatever like for example if, if if you see the matrix you can see that there was a lot of green and the shots that says a creative look uh john wick you have a lot of blues the the joker the same thing you have a lot of greens in the shots sometimes you have some yellows i don't know okay so that's what that's what we mean by color grading or creative look so one shot is more dominance and the um and the clip and so i said color grading or lots so i'm going to show you how you can create creative looks manually real quick and of course lots we're going to be working with lots because lots can be really helpful okay you can spend hours and hours creating a look but of course it sometimes it may never be as good as using a lot okay with that being said I'm going to keep this lecture short right here. And on the next one, we're going to start correcting our shots.